Many people have friends and family who have been the victim of a scam or have direct and distressing experience themselves. So far, so sadly familiar. Tonight, though, we have evidence that the harm done isn't just perpetrated against the victim, but many of those scamming us are themselves horribly treated, tricked, kidnapped, beaten, forced to work in scam centres in the Far East. In effect, modern slaves. That slavery can begin in Thailand, a mecca for gap year students and other young people who are themselves scammed when they apply for what sounds like a plausible tech job. Kidnappers traffic them just across Thailand's borders into Laos and Myanmar. Most scams involve cryptocurrencies. Many are Chinese run and it seems nothing can be done. In Southeast Asia's poorest nations, where borders are porous and corruption is rife, a crime has taken root that is deceiving people in every corner of the globe. The people that you're with, they're the people that have your, your life in their hands. We spoke to Sarah at home in Africa. I was in Bangkok, where she was kidnapped last year. They drive around to confuse us. She'd got a job with a tech firm in Thailand, advertised on Facebook. Instead, she was trafficked to the border with Myanmar, her passport taken. When we uh, got to, to the side of the river and they got like a boat, and, and when you look across the river, you see their armed men with guns. And they say to us, OK, get inside the boat and lay low. So I'm thinking, OK, if I raise my head, I'm going to get shot. Sarah was then trapped inside a compound for nine months and, using messaging apps, forced to persuade Brits and Americans to invest in cryptocurrency. So my job was to make friends, make connection, make them believe that I'm the rich Asian woman talking to them. And then they can entrust me with the money. We travelled to that border. Thai military were on patrol. Yet people are still being smuggled across the Moi River to Myanmar, close to where Sarah was held. So is it, it's quite unusual to get this close. Jake Sims works for the International Justice Mission, the organisation that rescued Sarah. What will likely be the setup inside? Yeah, these look like the, the dorm buildings, probably where people are sleeping and eight, ten to a room. The people who are in that little tower are almost certainly overseeing the movements that are happening inside that area. Yeah. Just like you would imagine a prison guard in a, in a yard. It's hard to comprehend when you're here that just 150 metres away from where I'm standing, people are being forced to scam millions of pounds out of others from across the world, yet nobody can do anything to stop it. ITV News obtained secret video of what these scam operations look like on the inside and what can happen to victims. Some have been chained up, beaten with sticks and electrocuted. They're not your stereotypical trafficking victim. These are educated people, they're technologically savvy, and they're going onto social media platforms looking for jobs. Very, very often you'll also see major brands, like in this example, Accenture, Thailand. That's a fake offering a reasonable salary. So in effect, why would you question it? Exactly. Yeah. This was the site in 2020, but in the last four years, the notorious KK Park has grown rapidly. It's enormous, and like basically anyone could either be a victim of the human trafficking side, or they could be a victim of the, the crime itself. And these are people from the UK, from the US, from China, from Taiwan. They're losing their life savings. 6,000 miles away in Manchester, Rebecca was scammed just like this. I felt sick. She thought, no, this, this can't be happening to me. She clicked on a pop-up site on Facebook linked to a crypto platform. A so-called advisor then told her how to invest in order to make a profit. I invested £200, built up rapport with account manager. I was speaking to him more than I was speaking to m my husband. And over months and months, I added more and more. And that's when things went wrong. She was investing in his account, not hers. The money disappeared. 
one of my contacts online today at 12.31. Even today, whoever scammed Rebecca is still active, but nobody knows where from. It could be anywhere in this region, because along the Mekong River, there are yet more compounds. From within these high-rises, there have been reports and pleas for help, this time on the thai Lao border. Thailand is a transportation hub. We posed as tourists to be allowed into Lao. Okay. Into a special economic zone that's fueled by Chinese money and has a reputation for extensive illegal activity. Numerous calls for help from buildings in this area have been reported. Difficult to control. The Thai government knows who's responsible. From the information we have, it's various groups that have joined forces. Most of them are Chinese. Siriwit Shante Shah Si Kun is part of Thailand's Special Investigation Unit. You know where it's happening. Why can't it just be stopped? Because the crime is happening outside Thailand's borders, we don't have the authority to investigate, so we can't stop it. Every country involved needs to cooperate intensively. Because when cooperation does happen, people can be freed. What happens to him now? We witnessed the rescue of an East African man taken to a Thai government shelter. He'd been held in Myanmar for a year. His identity had to be protected. How's he doing, Noah? He's uh, obviously experienced a lot of trauma, and he's still trying to process uh, what has happened to him. In Bangkok, where his journey as a modern slave began, he now has refuge from this crime of exploitation violence and fraud that affects lives far beyond this city. Well, as you can see, Lucy is back from Thailand. Um, just talk me through the kind of process of reporting this, because like, when I first heard about the story and then, I, and then I watched it and I watched you kind of emerging onto the bank, I mean, that is a literal prison camp right opposite you. There can't surely be any question about that. I mean, I thought maybe it would be high rise blocks or something or a few sheds, but an actual prison camp. Yes, Tom. When we were crouched on that bank, I saw the watchtower. And I admit, I was a bit, I was a bit nervous, instantly mm. thinking, oh, they won't want us to be, to be here. But they've got no interest on who's on the other side of that bank. What they are looking and what they are guarding are the people on the inside. We were just barely 40 metres on the Thai side, mm. and then looking across to, to Myanmar. And having seen it for myself, it is the huge scale of these operations that is so staggering. And knowing that inside these places, there are cameras everywhere. Sarah told me, mm. the woman at the, we spoke to at the very beginning of that report, that there are men in the corridors with weapons, and not just small guns, AK-47s. Every movement you make is watched. You, have, you can't go on toilet breaks without having an escort. She said nobody dares look up from mm. their computer when they're working, when they're doing these scans. People don't even let their hands stray from beyond on their, their keyboard. You saw some of the punishments. If they don't meet their targets, that's what the kind of thing that they face. One, another victim I spoke to when I was out there, a Thai victim, she said that her, she had to find five new victims every single day. For every victim she didn't find, she was beaten up with a plank of wood and she wasn't very good at it. I mean, we probably, probably most people watching this will know of someone who's very sadly been scammed. Talk us through the scale of it. Well, if we're talking about online scamming as a whole, and this was so shocking. Shocking is a word overused, but it was so shocking to me when they told me that the online scamming mm. market is more valuable than the illicit drugs trade now. We're comparing $7 trillion for the online mm. scamming. We're talking about 360 million when we're talking about drugs. In Cambodia alone, it's worth mm. 12 billion pounds now. And when we're talking about the numbers of people mm. that are trafficked to, to carry out these crimes, we're talking about around 120,000 in okay. Myanmar yeah. and Cambodia. And this is happening and it is being allowed to flourish in countries where corruption is rife or war-torn countries. So right now, Myanmar is... Mm. has this ongoing civil war that is particularly um, at its peak at the moment. 
So these compounds are effectively in ungovernable areas and just continue to grow.